If you have to leave earlier, please sit closer to the exits. And uh, when it is time for the questions, if you would please, when I call on you, stand and really ask the question in that same loud voice that you expect to hear from here so that everyone can hear it as well as it being taped. I would appreciate that. I will, if you don't hear it, just raise your hand and I will restate the question. Sure. Whenever you're ready to. Welcome to Inside New York's Art World. I'm Barbara Lee Diamondstein, and our guest today is Robert Ryman, a man who came to New York 25 years ago as a professional musician and stayed on to become widely known and admired for his dazzling white canvases. A warm welcome to you. Glad that you could join us. Having never studied painting, having arrived here as a, is it a tenor saxophonist? How did you become a painter? Uh, well, you have to understand, uh, this was... Uh, Speak up. Yes. yes, hello, hello. They're there. All right. Uh, can you hear? No? No. no? Perhaps you can turn the sound hello, up. Hello, hello, hello. I think the sound is on, but you really have to speak in a, you yeah. have such a gentle mm -hmm. voice that you have to speak in the biggest voice that you can. Uh, yes, how's that? Yeah, that's better. So, so. It's really, your, you have to speak in the biggest voice yeah. that you can. How did someone who came to New York as a tenor saxophonist end up Maybe. being a painter? <laughs> uh, well, you know, it's, uh, uh, that's, I don't know exactly, you know, uh, I came here in 52, I, I was a jazz musician uh, at that time, and, and I, I came to New York for the music, you know, but I had never, uh, you know, I came from Tennessee, and I'd, I'd never been really anywhere, I mean, to, you know, outside of Tennessee much. And uh, so coming to New York, I, I saw many things, you know, I saw everything, uh, just like all the tourists. And, and, I, uh, and I went to museums, and uh, I saw paintings for the first time. And you had never seen a painting before? Well, I had, <laughs> I had seen, uh, I had seen uh, reproductions of paintings, you know, and uh, I had seen uh, uh, pictures of flowers and things like that, you know, at uh, people's houses, uh, you know, but nothing of any consequence. And nothing that, uh, you know, I, I hadn't considered it. I would never, when I say seen painting, I'd never, in a museum really, context. Really uh, uh, looked at it, and so I did, and um, and I became more interested in in painting. It, it uh, interested me very much, and I um, became involved with it. And I, after it was about two or three years, I gave up the music and decided that I wanted to. Uh, paint. I wanted to uh, investigate <laughs> this uh, this thing more and uh, really get involved with it. Um, you had made your living as a musician up until that point. How did you manage no, to survive? No, I really didn't make my. Uh, it wasn't. I mean, I, I didn't really make a living as a musician. I'm, 
I might have uh, if I had uh, kept kept up with it. But but um, no, well, I did all kinds of uh, flunky jobs. You know, I was. Uh, uh, you know, I worked in office buildings, and I did uh, this and that, and then I ended up for a long, uh, for a number of years at the uh, Modern Museum as a guard, so that, uh, which was my best, one of my best jobs. I time. assume it was also part of because, your art education. <laughs> yes, it certainly was. <laughs> and, uh, I got to, you know, I, I had the opportunity to see, uh, to see a lot, and to spend a lot of time with pain and, uh, um, and then I also worked at the public library uh, in the art division. And there you read a lot. Uh, yes. So I, I got, uh, you know, I was able to read and look, look through uh, the books and the scrapbooks and the folders. And, uh, Did so you ever really formally cool. study painting? No, not as, uh, I didn't go to a, an art school as such. Um, not that I, I mean, I would have, I think, uh, but uh, you should realize that at that time, uh, this is uh, uh, 1954, um, there wasn't really much of, I mean, there weren't any schools like visual arts, or, uh, uh, there was the Art Students League, but uh, that didn't interest me because I, I uh, Right from the beginning, I wasn't uh, uh, interested in painting uh, uh, realistically. Uh, painting landscapes or still life sort of figure. Um, however, I did do a little of that. But, what did uh, your early a, work look like? Exactly. Did it have the same scale or color? Uh, well, you know, when anyone is beginning uh, anything, uh, the first uh, uh, the first thing I did was uh, find out how things worked. You know, you find out uh, what the paint does, and, and you know how the brushes work, and what uh, what uh, kind of uh, what's going to happen when you put things together, and, and uh, how um, how colors uh, uh, react together, and so uh, and composition. And, and, uh, there's a lot of experimenting and just trying, you know, just uh, you try and, uh, and uh, see how things go together and, uh, and uh, the, the technical aspect of it. Um, so I, um, as all students, you know, you know you, so you do, you, know, you try to think. Things. And so I worked with composition and color and, and uh, uh, all of those uh, devices. Um, the Surrounded as you were at the Museum of Modern Art, how affected was your vision by all those cubists? Well, I would, um, you know, I would spend time with different uh, painters. You know, I would go, uh, you know, I would uh, look at uh, Matisse. Uh, I would, be involved with his paintings maybe for a week or so, and then I would you know, go to uh, some of the cubists, cubists who would say the uh, Picasso's and Brock's and, and uh, Cezanne. And, um, so you know, I learned from from all of these painters um, and and many others also, you know, not just the ones that I. Saw the modern, but uh, the things that I saw in galleries and and, and, uh, and from uh, books, of course, you know the use of the uh, library, uh, and just kind of general information, you know, picking up uh, whatever was of interest to me at the moment. At what point did your work evolve and change from the small drawings and? paintings that you were doing, often in color as well. I'm sorry, well, At what point did your work begin to change? What informed either your vision or your <coughs> perception that caused your work to change? Well, you know, it was a, a, a gradual uh, uh, 
it's a gradual development. It doesn't, uh, it's not something that happens, uh, at least it didn't with me, uh, uh, overnight or, or you know, even in a year. It, uh, um, you, you begin to, uh, the more uh, I worked on it, Paintings, and, and the more I considered the problems, the more uh, you know the work would uh, would slowly change. Uh, uh, I um, became, after a while, not so interested in the color uh, because uh, I wanted to um, uh, paint, uh, kind of, kind of paint the paint. Uh, so, and of course, I wasn't painting uh, uh, pictures. Uh, I think that maybe that's something that uh, should be understood. Uh, I wasn't painting an image uh, as we, uh, you know, we think of it. usually the painting is thought of as, a, uh, as pictures. You say pictures are not what you make. You make paintings. Perhaps you can describe to us what you mean. Yes, well, uh, the, uh, now, you know, uh, let's see, <laughs> uh, paintings, well, I, they, they can be pictures, and many times they are. Uh, I think, of course, at the beginning, uh, paintings were mostly pictures uh, of something, of a, a person, of a still life, of a situation, <coughs> of, of uh, an object, um, uh, and these um, pictures um, involve a certain specific space, uh, the space of the, the canvas, and, and uh, usually they were framed uh, uh, to isolate that space from the space of the wall, and they were hung, uh, and still are, on, uh, on a wall. Uh, at eye level to be, and so they'd be seen, looked at. Now, um, uh, uh, that's all right, uh, but um, um, I um, was not, since I was not painting a, a picture, I was not going to paint an image isolated in the space, um, then, um, How's that thing? Can people come? Um, it had to be approached from a, a different, uh, uh, I mean, uh, there had to be a different way of looking at it, a different way of seeing it. Now, uh, if, if my, I was, uh, I wanted to make a painting without the, this image uh, isolated within the space so that the painting itself was an image. Uh, and also its uh, surround, uh, uh, where the wall became itself very important. But um, uh, that uh, interested me because it, it seemed to open up uh, many <coughs> possibilities, uh, many um, uh, discoveries for myself uh, because I knew that I could paint uh, a picture. I knew that I could use composition. I knew, knew that I could uh, 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 use color and and these devices, which I still do, but but in a uh, different way, maybe than the thought of the usual picture I think. Um, so so this interested me very much. This um, uh, approach to to uh, make a painting without um, now it being picture making. Um, you said yeah, that you yes. you don't really make white paintings, that you use a lot of white in order to make other things happen with the paint. What does that mean? Well, you know, um, anyone who has uh, seen my work, uh, maybe you know, superficially, uh, well, I mean, superficially, it could see, see as if uh, it were only white. Uh, it was a white painting, and that that was a purpose. 
Uh, I only, I only uh, mean by, uh, if I say that I don't paint a white painting, or I mean I don't paint white paintings, uh, that, I, that is not my primary concern, uh, to, to uh, make white paintings. Uh, I think uh, many people have done painting in white, and, and, uh, for specific reasons to solve a certain uh, problem that they're working on. But uh, really, once you've uh, done that, uh, once the problem has been solved, it's not much, uh, wouldn't be much interest in doing it again. I mean, uh, uh, kind, of, kind of boring just uh, repeating the same uh, uh, image. Um, but uh, I use the white uh, because it's a, a neutral, you see it's a paint that can be, that I can use to, that allows other things to come into focus with, with the work. Uh, uh, the surface, uh, the subtle colors of the, uh, of, the, uh, the, of the surface, the textures, the uh, the, Have you used blue under oil. some of the pictures, under some of the paintings? Yes. Well, it, it's been. Uh, uh, I worked on. Uh, in fact, just recently, done, I did some paintings uh, on a blue surface, uh, uh, which is the, the blue was the color of the, uh, of the surface, um, and also on some black surfaces, uh, which. Uh, of course, will react with the with the paint and give it a certain depth and uh, and a certain movement that uh, affects it. And of course, some and well, in this particular case, the the, uh, the material is very thin, uh, maybe an eighth of an inch uh, in thickness. So that an edge was left. So that there was a black line and a blue line, which was. Uh, also part, part of the composition. It seems to me that from time to time you are a teacher as well, especially when it comes to question of perception and light. In fact, you've said that perception relates to how we are trained to see and do things. Is perception, in, as you investigate it, the same thing as the impressionists were looking into? What was it I said? I mean, you, you said uh, that perception relates to the way we're trained to see and do things. And my question to you is your perception as you investigate, is it the same that the Impressionists had in mind? Well, yeah, um, uh, we're trained, yes, I meant um, that uh, we're all trained. Uh, we're, 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 we train our eyes to see. We, you know, we're trained to see and see things in a certain way uh, that uh, we're used to seeing, uh, 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 that we see around us every day. And, and, we, and uh, painters um, tend to uh, um, uh, their well, their perception and their, their vision is maybe a little, you know, more uh, uh, highly tuned, you might say. Uh, 
change the scale, change the, uh, the texture, uh, uh, change, uh, maybe it has to do with a light reflection uh, and absorption that isn't uh, what um, I had thought. Uh, there are many uh, uh, these things uh, are, uh, you know, come into it as the work is, is progressing. I mean, I, the result, I, I never am sure of. And, uh, I mean, at the beginning. Um, and uh, I always, uh, if the work is successful, I learn something. You know, I do it you know, from the One of the problems that you've tried to resolve is that of edges. You work with edges, sometimes emphasizing, even emphasizing the paintings' sides with special brackets and affixing the paintings with special brackets to the wall, but no longer framing them in a traditional sense. Why do you do that? Are you redefining space? Uh, well, um, yeah, uh, maybe I hadn't thought of it like that. Uh, but, uh, I, I, um, the the fasteners uh, that you talk about. Uh, this is uh, something. About, they are an industrial fastener. <coughs> well, uh, the fasteners that uh, on these uh, recent on the recent uh, paintings uh, I had made. Uh, especially for the, the paintings uh, uh, and to, as to the scale uh, for the paintings and, and the, uh, the, uh, the shape uh, of the fastener and how it would work visually uh, with, with the painting uh, uh, and as for its uh, color even the, uh, if it was uh, steel if it were uh, there again the light reflection of it uh, if it were plated with black oxide so that it was uh, that changed it, or if it were the um, uh, cadmium plate. But uh, the, the question, the, um, the um, thinking behind the, the fasteners uh, had to do, uh, has to do with um, the way a painting hangs uh, on a wall, because now usually paintings, uh, particularly if they're pictures, uh, hang. Uh, invisible on the wall because uh, we're not so interested in that. You know, it's, it's the uh, it's the image that we're looking at and uh, in a confined space. Now, uh, since uh, these uh, this work are not since it's not a picture, then uh, it could hang visibly, and uh, I wanted it to. Uh, I thought that by, uh, if the hanging, if it were visibly uh, attached to the wall, then it would become more part of the wall. I mean, therefore, visually, the wall could work with the painting um, uh, much more. Also, it, what, what happens there, too, is that the painting doesn't exist uh, unless it's on the wall, yeah. whereas uh, with uh, the traditional pictures, uh, you can, they can be leaning against the wall, you can look at them because they all, it's always confined, or it's defined in a, in a specific space. Whereas with these uh, paintings, uh, they don't really exist unless they, uh, they are on the wall, uh, as part of the wall, as part of the room. Um, the faster is being, uh, the painting consisting of painted surface and, uh, and uh, the composition, uh, the, the light uh, uh, reflection and absorption, the edges uh, and structure of the, of the uh, surface, of the uh, structure itself, whether it's canvas or plastic or uh, whatever material it is, uh, that holds the paint. And then the visual uh, composition of the fasteners which uh, we see that hold it uh, to the wall um, and make it part of the wall. So it brings that into our vision also. Uh, that was uh, 
part of the consideration of the fasteners. In earlier work, I know you that you believe that there are other things to do with paint other than make pictures. And in earlier work, and I'm thinking of a now famous show at the Jewish Museum, where a work was taped to the wall, you not only painted the canvas, let the paint spill over to the tape, and ultimately to the wall. Perhaps you could describe the thinking behind that. Um, that, that was a similar uh, approach. That was um, the Jewish was, Let's see. That, um, I think it was seventy-one. Yeah. Uh, that, uh, Is the concept more than the location that I'm yes, really interested um, in? I, th <coughs> um, I th well, there were a number of. Uh, uh, Solutions. This is what we did. I mean, I tried them. Uh, some were on um, vinyl uh, sheets uh, that were colors, different colors. Uh, one was red, a deep red, one was uh, blue. But I think the one that you're, uh, where the paint was uh, applied to the surface, and uh, the surface was painted, uh, the um, um, well, first, I should say, the, the surface was attached to the wall uh, with uh, tape, two at the top and two at the bottom, uh, to hold the surface to the wall uh, so it could be painted. Uh, the surface was painted uh, in a particular way with a particular paint, I mean, which I can tell you about. I mean, that doesn't I'm going to all of it. Um, uh, so Why did you do that? Well, uh, well to, to make the paint. You mean, uh, onto the tape and onto the wall. Oh, yes. Well, uh, the, uh, you see, first the surface was put on the wall. Well, it was to make a painting uh, as. Uh, uh, very thin, so that the paint and the wall were just almost one, you see. And, and it uh, worked with the, uh, the wall itself. The painting and the wall became, uh, became one uh, surface. Uh, and by that I mean the corner of the wall, for instance, was taken into consideration in the floor and the ceiling. And the, the, uh, uh, the fourth corner. So that uh, so that the scale of these units had to do with the size of the wall, the height, and the length, and that would that would uh, vary depending on the on the wall. Also, the surface of the wall uh, was considered because you know all walls are not uh, the same. Some have a texture, rough, some are smooth, some and uh, and uh, that has to do. It also, uh, but um, well, I don't know how I was going to describe it. Please do. Process, but <laughs> well, please maybe, do. There were several different uh, uh, approaches to, to that. Uh, uh, after this paint was dry, you see, then the, the tape could be removed uh, because it was no longer necessary to hold the, the, uh, the material. The, the, surface that was painted to the wall. And uh, when, it, when it was removed, you, um, you saw where the tape was there. You saw the original surface because of that having been painted where the tape was. And you saw the wall. Um, and uh, in this case, it might have been deeper in uh, the back of uh, um, And you saw the soft edges uh, well, first you saw the soft, the hard edge of the, uh, the surface as it touched the wall, and you saw the soft edge of the paint as it left that surface and uh, went on the wall itself, which, uh, which uh, actually held the surface to the wall. Um, uh, so that uh, composition uh, wise, I mean, within each individual unit was. Uh, 
you know, the, the soft uh, edge and the hard edge, and then the light reflecting surface and the light absorbing wall, and, uh, and the color and the texture of the original surface that was not painted because it was covered by tape. Uh, then this is, uh, well, this, uh, okay, right, this was uh, maybe the units were repeated uh, in, a, in a, uh, a series of five. Uh, or nine or seven. Usually I try to use an odd number because um, I mean, depending on the length of the walls, I said before, uh, um, uh, I prefer an odd number because uh, an odd number you always have a center um, uh, visually. Uh, whereas with an even number, uh, you have the, the wall of your center. Um, uh, and the odd number has a feeling of expansion uh, of continuing on, whereas the even number is more of a static uh, uh, feeling, you know, uh, visually as well, and, uh, more of a you know, closed uh, uh, situation, which, which I use too, but, uh, but not as much as the uh, odd number. Listening to you, it becomes increasingly apparent that very little that you do is accidental. It is all very carefully considered. How do you entitle your pictures? Excuse me, your paintings. Um, they certainly do not have the usual descriptive titles that we come to associate with pictures. Uh, no, well, yes, uh, that is, is really a problem. Uh, uh, and, and uh, I use the word title. Uh, um, I think all painters uh, have that uh, have uh, worked on this problem, uh, of, and uh, I haven't really solved it uh, to my real satisfaction either. It's uh, you had a rather creative approach to it. <laughs> It's well. You see, first, uh, of course, pictures can be. Uh, oh, I, can, I can see. <laughs> it's really shock. Um, uh, pictures can are traditionally titled because usually it's an image uh, of something or for something or about something. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, so it was uh, traditionally um, correct uh, to title something, aside from the fact that it uh, identified it and, and uh, uh, you could uh, remember what one thing was from another thing and uh, all this. Uh, and of course, uh, it's still used. Uh, uh, in my case, and many uh, painters who work in, in the manner that I might work similar um, uh, investigation, uh, use uh, titles, I mean, they're again for um, identification to, you have to keep track of what uh, one thing is and from another thing and know what you're talking about. You know, it's nice to know what pain you're talking about. Is it about really that for that our thing. purposes rather than yours that you no. entitle pictures? No, it's, it's for my purpose and for <laughs> Well, it's it's uh, it is necessary, uh, I think. And now, but I wanted to talk about the word title. Now, it's really not uh, maybe correct anymore in, in my case to use the, the word title, but uh, I, I prefer to say name mm -hmm. painting because um, it's since uh, I'm not painting a picture of something, then the title doesn't really. So much meaning about a name, yes. Uh, 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 How did you arrive at the name general for a picture, for a painting? Uh, well, the, um, I tried uh, to find um, names that were um, Recognizable. I mean, I, I mean I, it's, it's, it's one thing to make up a word. You know, you can put a lot of letters together and make up a word, or you can say number one, number two, number three, number eight, A, B, C, D, and, and things like that. But uh, then that becomes also confusing because you, 
who say number 77, you know, J in the uh, 1960 you know, uh, or whatever, and maybe you're not quite sure what it is, but if you have a word for it, uh, and it, it, your memory can be if you count them. So I, I would try and come up with names for the paintings that uh, were somewhat common. That is ambiguous because on the one hand it means ordinary and on the other hand it means of the highest rank. Was that part of your intent as well? Well, you know, uh, sometimes it works out that way. Uh, but I, I didn't really consider it that much. I, I picked it actually because uh, uh, it was the, I think it was the name of the world the place where I got the uh, steel, you know, it was called General, <laughs> general something, General Fabrication. <laughs> that might be a general fabrication. <laughs> but I also, that is it, 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 that, it's just kind of, you know, it's a name that uh, is, is very familiar, but yet doesn't uh, mean all that much like uh, there are others too. Uh, Is that with an O or an A? Allied is another name like that. Uh, allied shipping or you know, allied this allied. Um, yeah. uh, well, oh, I'm sorry, what, what did you say O or uh, It's a bad pun. Um, your use of industrial materials, either the ready-mades or the ones that you've described, the vinyl sheets, the metal fasteners, does that impersonal material have a special significance? Are you saying something philosophical as well as something that is a traditional painterly concern? No, no. I use the, these uh, materials because of the different surfaces that I can work with. It gives me the, uh, the opportunity to explore, uh, such as uh, you know, with the steel. Uh, that was used to... Uh, actually, I didn't really want to use steel. <laughs> Is the light a factor? Is there such a thing as New York light? I don't uh, maybe, maybe so, but uh, I don't know. I don't. Uh, I'm not so concerned with that. Uh, but light in and of itself is an important factor in your work. Oh, yes. Oh, very much. Uh, my paintings uh, have to do with light, uh, and they're, they're extremely sensitive to light, different lights, different light. Uh, situations, uh, 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 but uh, I'm really not, uh, I mean, New York Light, and, 
doesn't matter in the night. There are places that I, <laughs> where light has really a fantastic life. You know, I mean, not in New York, but uh, uh, some place in Europe where light is. Uh, is uh, where was that? Really, you know, but I don't know why exactly. Um, uh, Amsterdam and Holland. And, uh, uh, but, but it's really something that doesn't matter so much. But, I mean, in my, in my uh, work, uh, as far as the light outside, is, uh, I, don't, I don't pay enough worry. Actually, you don't make much of a fuss about many things. And you've used the expression, no fuss, to describe your own work. What do you mean by that? I have. I mean, well, I <laughs> you have, and <laughs> widely in print. But the kind of the lack of fussiness, it was almost a Kantian philosophical exchange, and that you compared it to, for example, the work of de Kooning. It has the exact opposite. <laughs> so your past is coming <laughs> to visit it on you now. I really don't know. But there certainly is no fussiness <laughs> in the painting. I have no idea what I said there. <laughs> you said <laughs> at great length to Carter Rappa. Maybe he was putting it in context or something. But uh, He also put it in quotes. <laughs> um, that's really not fair. I'd prefer... Well, I, I, um, I mean, it's... If, uh, no fuss. Well, um, uh, I meant, uh, I mean, I probably... <laughs> you probably meant. <laughs> uh, I think it had to do with um, uh, uh, no uh, comp compromise, maybe. Uh, well, I think um, uh, also it has to do with fussing, fussing, yeah. <laughs> it has to do with uh, when you're painting, uh, when I'm painting, uh, I, uh, I try and uh, it, had, it should be right uh, the first time. I mean, if something has to be uh, struggled over or, uh, or fussed with, all right, <laughs> uh, uh, then, you know, then, then I think there's something wrong. You know, there's, there's a problem. And it never turns out very well. It's best to just abandon it. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, the approach uh, should be direct and to the point and, and without any uh, thing there that doesn't need to be there. I mean, you know, it's uh, particularly a temptation for someone that's beginning pain to, to uh, maybe uh, fuss a little bit. <laughs> to you know, add a little something here and just go you know, to uh, fool around and uh, maybe to try certain things that uh, might not really be necessary. So I think maybe hey, that's what it was we're talking about. How does that square with your view of comparing the painter to the research scientist? That certain problems are selected and then one goes about trying to find solutions? Well, yes, and that's... Uh, I think that's what painters uh, do. Uh, they uh, uh, they try and solve uh, problems. Uh, I mean, the study problems concerning painting, uh, very much uh, in the same way that a scientist goes about to solve mm -hmm. certain problems. I mean, a research scientist, of course, of uh, maybe uh, uh, bacteria or something. You know, they do they try and find. Uh, Solutions, uh, trying, trying to uh, uh, discover solutions to these problems, and they pick uh, you know one problem out of thousands of uh, things to explore and work on. And, and it's, a, it's a similar kind of thing I think that painters do. But they, uh, uh, I mean, you can't work on everything that is possible, you know, so you, you take what interests you most and you uh, uh, explore it. You know, find uh, uh, what solutions are possible, what uh, 
to this visual uh, what, is, what, what can happen with this, you know, where it will lead to, and uh, kind of one, uh, uh, one uh, solution will set off a, uh, a new problem, yeah. where as you, you, you may able to see something that you were not able to see before because you didn't know, uh, you didn't know about it, and you weren't you didn't have experience in the uh, Perception, right? To uh, to see it, so so then uh, then it kind of snowballs on, and you, know, and, uh, and, uh, and you compare uh, your solutions with uh, with other solutions <laughs> in, the, in the same field, and you see that someone else has solved uh, certain thing, and, and so you uh, take that into consideration. That's where the uh, exchange of information you know, is, is important. And, uh, 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 well, that's what it has to do. You mention your mention of Amsterdam brings to mind. Uh, the fact that your work is prominently exhibited at both the Stedelijk Museum and the new and distinguished wing of the Kroler Mueller. There is very widespread appreciation and commitment to your work in whole parts of Europe. How do you compare the European response and understanding and perception to your work to American response? Uh, well, uh, I don't know uh, exactly. The, the, um, uh, there is a great deal of, of my work in Europe, uh, uh, probably maybe more so than here. Um, uh, uh, I don't know how that happened. Just uh, uh, maybe at one time there was a little more interest uh, there, but uh, maybe to uh, the uh, Europeans uh, more. Uh, uh, perceptive to painting in general, I don't mean just in my painting, but uh, they seem to, uh, uh, there seems to be a lot of interest in painting, uh, maybe more than here, I don't know, but, uh, uh, here is, um, and this is a very odd <laughs> statement, but here there seems Why not? to be a lot of, uh, uh, I mean, a great deal of interest in music. Uh, maybe more so than visual art. Uh, That's not the way most musicians see it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that could be. Uh, uh, I mean, I imagine I think uh, here. Are Europeans more, more interested in the avant-garde, or what they take to be the American avant-garde? Oh, I don't think so. I mean, <laughs> No, well, it's only a small world, you know, the, the, the visual painting. I mean, there, there are um, always a group of people you know, that are interested in it, uh, but it's never a mass thing. I mean, it's, it's, it's similar to opera, you know, I mean, uh, there are uh, many people who go to the opera and they're very involved with the opera, and many people who go to the symphony, and then there's the dance, the world of uh, uh, dance and, and uh, performance and theater, and, uh, and these are always, uh, uh, I mean, the visual arts, uh, they're always, uh, I mean, it's not a, a thing that everyone gets involved with. Uh, uh, I guess maybe, well, I'm just really interested in it very hot. <laughs> you mentioned earlier that there was a great deal of information available in New York. How important is it to be a part of the art establishment? Well, you mean to be uh, in New York, you mean, uh, 
How influential is criticism on your work? How does it affect your work? Oh, no. Well, criticism doesn't uh, really affect it at all. I mean, it, uh, it's uh, surprising sometimes. I mean, I learned some, some things that I hadn't really considered from uh, reading uh, certain things. Uh, um, For example? Uh, actually, I haven't read anything in a while. Long time. Um, I just remember at times being surprised at how someone came up with something that I didn't really hadn't uh, considered or hadn't intended. You know. uh, uh, but it really has no, it has no effect uh, on the work. Uh, I mean, because you see, it's a different thing. Um, it's almost as if um, the work. You see, the work that's being done now, uh, it's almost as if it had already been done, and, and, and uh, there's a continual thinking. I mean, I, I tend to think, uh, I'm always kind of thinking ahead. I mean, I'm always involved with what I'm not doing, uh, rather than, I mean, I'm more involved with what I'm not doing than or what I'm about to do, so I should say, uh, rather than what I'm doing at the moment. So that um, it's as if I'm always kind of uh, someplace else other than than uh, than what is seen at the moment. Uh, so that um, well, I mean, you know, it doesn't uh, have that much effect. Uh, to the works of what other painters do you respond? <laughs> Who has helped inform your vision, for example? Well, uh, uh, Matisse, I guess, was the biggest uh, and most important uh, uh, painter uh, for me at one time, and uh, there were others. Cezanne to a certain extent, and uh, Rothko also, uh, and, and, uh, and any number of painters you know, that, that I would look at from time to time, like Mondrian. Uh, 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 it always had to do with, with um, not so much what they were painting, you know, but how they were doing it, you know, what they were, uh, how they were putting things together. Why it was kind of it was much more of the how they did it and why they did it than what they were doing. Um, um, so you know, there was, uh, you know, you can sometimes just pick up a little thing from looking at something and hardly um, hardly realize where. where you saw that, you know, how it came to you. It's, it's the, a very subtle kind of thing. The only partial surprise in your list is the inclusion, of course, of that great colorist, uh, Matisse. Do you envision the possibility of your returning to color or to even to having a bound <coughs> painting, your version of a frame? Well, anything is uh, possible, I guess. But you know, <laughs> it's—I uh, don't think of it as that. I—I I don't think of my work as having not to do with color. Uh, and it is true that uh, I am not uh, really involved with color the way some painters uh, uh, are as a problem. Uh, but um, I do. I mean, the color is considered. Uh, subtle surfaces and the colors that I use. Um, uh, and so I don't know that um, uh, that would change, but it might. Uh, if, um, if color, um, I mean a specific color, you know, we're talking about red, green, and blue, um, where the, where the, where the 
a solution to something to, to a problem, and, and there's no reason why it couldn't be used. Uh, but uh, uh, I don't, I don't know anything. Uh, uh, it doesn't seem that way that the uh, way I'm approaching things at the moment. A number of your works seem very similar. What makes each of them unique? Well, it, uh, uh, similarities, but you know, it's just it's uh, it's simply the way they are painted. Uh, uh, the uh, you know, Monet's uh, uh, did a lot of, well, Monet did a lot of waterworks, and he also did some haystacks, uh, a number of haystacks that were very similar, <laughs> but uh, very uh, unique. Um, and I think it's, it's the same. I, uh, uh, and each, uh, every painter has uh, his own sensibility, his, his, his own uh, sense of working, his working sense, so that uh, whatever he does, he can uh, he or she will always, uh, will always uh, be the way uh, they would approach it. Uh, and so uh, it's a very similar approach. I think you have, <coughs> and uh, not only have you answered the question for illuminating your work and for helping us all see new things, very special thanks to you, Robert Ryman, for being with us tonight. I'm Barbara Lee Diamondstein, and this is Inside New York's Art World. Thank you very much. And what we do now is have the class share in the conversation. If you have a question, will you please raise your hand? There's a woman close to the aisle here. Well, we have, uh, obviously, if you're curious about whether you want your paintings to be kept, and they stay permanently on the wall, which is it's attached to you, I oh, um, uh, No, not always. Uh, uh, in some cases, those uh, paintings were destroyed, and uh, I mean they only existed at that uh, at that time and place. Uh, however, they could be done in a different place in a permanent situation. Uh, and you're, you're speaking of just a, a specific kind of painting that I did, but there are others that. Uh, are permanent and have, uh, that can be uh, uh, re uh, reinstalled somewhere. The question was, how do you feel oh, when they're destroyed? No, 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 I mean, that was uh, just part of the, the work. I mean, they, they <coughs> on temporary uh, exhibit. Yes, yeah. they, they were temporary by nature, so uh, there was. Uh,